What's up guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, another holiday buyer's guide for you. Today, we are covering everything spinnerbaits. Spinnerbait fishing is one of those bass fishing staple categories. For a lot of guys, it's how they caught their first fish. For a lot of guys, it's how they still catch their fish. The spinnerbait is an amazing tool and it should be in your lineup if it is not. Now, just like chatterbaits, this is a giant category. If you guys missed yesterday, because if you don't know this, these buyer's guides are running seven days a week right now. If you missed yesterday, we covered chatterbaits. We'll link that one in the video description along with a bunch of the other buyer's guides that we've already done. But today's all about spinnerbaits. Now it's a giant, giant category, right? We can just start rolling through piles of spinnerbaits. But what we want to do today is simplify it for you. And we have done that. We have seriously narrowed it down to just a handful of different baits for different situations. Uh, to kick this thing off, we're going to talk about full frame or full size spinner baits first. Then we'll talk finesse spinner baits before we get into trailers, trailer hooks, all that stuff. Uh, you mind if I just kick it off? Go for it. To kick this thing off, let's talk full frame spinner baits. These are the baits that we focus on when either you've got stained water or you know that the bass are targeting larger bait fish, you know, bluegill and panfish or large shad, shiners, gizzard shad, that sort of thing. In that category, we narrowed it down because this is just a sampling. I mean, tons <laughs> of spinner baits down to two. Okay. The first one is the Nichols Catalyst. Then the other one is that Terminator P1. Both of these are very unique in their category. That Catalyst is probably my current all around favorite for a full frame. Uh, they come with plated hardware so it's like this one is bright gold the ones that are silver are bright silver they're plated so a lot of flash coming off both blades and head simple skirts a great keeper on there that is often overlooked a great keeper for your trailer it's just a great full-size frame again when we're throwing a full-size spinnerbait we're looking to get that bigger profile. We typically do that by pairing it to swim bait trailer, and we'll get to all that. Uh, but the other one, the Terminator, is just a little bit more finesse than the Catalyst. So the Catalyst is a little bit heavier wire, big fish minded, where the Terminator is a little bit narrower blades, a little bit lighter wire, smaller hook, though it is an O'Shaughnessy style hook, which is one of the things I love about it. So it's a very strong hook, despite being smaller, great keeper system, and of course, great colors. Now, one thing you're going to notice with all of these baits is they're all double willow. Again, this is about narrowing the category. We're not telling you if you're that guy who's out there thumping that single Colorado at night that you need to stop. If a guy is going to gamble on a spinnerbait, you want to try, try a double willow. That double willow, the vibration that that puts off, the actual sound of that vibration in the water sounds most similar to thread fin shad out of all the different blade styles and bass are attracted to that so we always start with double willow and that's why we focus here 90 percent of the time maybe more 95 percent of the time when we throw a spinnerbait it is that double willow but for full frames just those two as just your standard if you're going to grab one and go go with one of those yeah look how look how bright that thing is bright gold, big old gold bladed uh, willow blade, chartreuse and white. You know, that is your full size spinnerbait. For me, uh, one of the first, my first bass ever in catching in a, in a lake, uh, I caught on a chartreuse and white spinnerbait nice. after getting all amped up watching Bill Dance do it. But, uh, you know, spinnerbaits, <clears throat> the whole gist of a spinnerbait <clears throat> is to mimic a small school of bait, right? You're, you're, you're mimicking a bait ball. And so 
it's it's a it's a unique bait. It's been around for a long time. It's caught lots and lots of fish. It's probably one of the original bass fishing baits, right? That's bait. And it seems like the last several years it's kind of went to the wayside unless you're kind of with the chatterbait. The chatterbait, the Alabama rig, right? There's some different there's some yep. key players, but uh this next category, what do you want to call this category? This is like the specialty category, I guess. Yeah, like your standouts. So <clears throat> Like Matt showed you, there are a ton of spinnerbaits on the market. So I got four specialty or standout spinnerbaits for you guys. The first one's going to be this guy right here. This is the River to Sea Bling. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. These blades are about as thin as you can get them. You can, you can flex them. You can bend them. Uh, this, what allows... <clears throat> This spinnerbait, what these blades allow the spinnerbait to do is be able to fish it extremely slow. So if you're target casting, you know, a lot of guys, when they're fishing a spinnerbait, they're fishing, they're making target cast to yeah. isolated pieces of cover or structure. So this allows you to kind of walk that bait through that lay down. You can really slow down and, and bump it and get that, get that bait through um, and that, so that guy right there, again, it has this a different sound than a lot of these other spinner baits, but again, different vibration, real thin blades. They're super flexible. That's a really cool bait. Next up, <laughs> at least got the Demiki T O T. Now what makes this bait special is it's a lighter wire hook. And we're going to talk about finesse spinner baits here in a second. Matt's going to kind of go into finesse spinner baits. Uh, what this allows you to do is use lighter line. You know, you, you don't want to have real heavy line with a lighter wire hook. You'll bend the hook out. But if you're uh, in a finesse situation, clear water, you're having a nice natural trailer on there. You're trying to mimic that school of bait fish in clear water. It allows you to use lighter line and uh, still get good hook penetration. If you're trying to set a real stout hook with light line, a lot of times you'll lose fish because you can't get you can't drive that hook home. So that is a really cool one. It also has some like I don't even know Mylar? You call it. I guess yeah, something you'd tie into like a fly or something. So it just adds a little bit of uh flash and a little bit of substance to that to that skirt. Mm -hmm. Now the next two for you, these are both Nichols spinner baits, the pulsator. What sets these spinner baits apart is the blades, right? The blades is one of the most often overlooked part uh, parts of the spinnerbait. What the guys at Nichols did, they went and they added specific flash to the blades. We have underwater footage of this guy right here. This is the it's got like a scale pattern on the blades. We have underwater footage of basically the light reflecting off of this to the surface and bakes, coming back down into the lens of the camera. It throws a ton of flash. Crazy bright. So if you're looking for a bright, flashy spinnerbait. These pulsators are really cool. This guy right here, same thing. They have glitter on their blades. So now you can get like electric shad looking blades. Yeah. So how cool is that? You're you're trying to mimic that school of bait fish. We all know how good electric shad or those styles of colors look uh, on swim baits. So they went ahead, went the extra mile and added that, painted those blades with that glitter. So if you're looking for some flash, these pulsators are really good. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to give you a couple of staple baits. Like if you're going to grab one and go, bigger fish, more finesse, grab it and go. But we also want to give you some of those unique things. The ability to slow down, the ability to go to lighter line. These are solving problems, right? right? The spinnerbait, slick calm, bluebird, won't always get bit. But you throw some wind in there, you throw some chop in there, now they'll eat it. But what if they can't find yours amongst the commotion? You add all that flash to it, they're on it. It starts to slick off, and all of a sudden detail matters. Right. Those glitter blades come into play, right? We're solving some of those spinnerbait problems with unique baits. Now at the other end of the spectrum, we have finesse spinnerbaits. And this, it's so overlooked. No matter how much we talk about it, I don't, I don't get it because I throw this style of spinnerbait more often than I throw a full frame. They are the ticket. The only time for me that I'm throwing a full frame again is if I know they're on big bait fish or that water just got dirty. Even if it's been dirty, I tend to lean to finesse. 
But if it just got dirty, we just had a storm blow through, I'm throwing that big full size bait that they can track easily. But if that's not my condition, I'm going to smaller blades, smaller hooks, lighter line, and just plain getting bit in more situations. I have two here for you. The Mega Bass SV3. That bait, we crush with this thing. Super downsized blades. Like, look at the blade size difference. And this is the big blade, right? The back blade. Look at the difference there. Huge difference. So you're mimicking smaller bait fish, Mega Bass skirts, Mega Bass colors. I mean, they're ridiculous. You can pair it up to just about anything. It's also got these four larger strands in the back that make it so you don't have to have a trailer on it if you don't want to. You can fish it stock or with a trailer hook, or you can cut those short and then put a swim bait trailer on it if you want to. But a very, very light wire hook with a great single barb keeper. I'm able to throw this on 10 to 12 pound line, no problem, and get bit long after the full frame spinner baits drop off. The other one, this is a newer player. So Shimano came out with a Swagey Strong, a couple, in fact, I've got a stack of them here somewhere, Swagey Strongs. And these, since, since I got it in my hand, <laughs> well, this little rabbit hole here for you. There's a lot of different ways to store spinner baits. Most of them are obnoxious and take up way too much space in your boat, right? If you're really a spinnerbait guy, it takes half your compartment to have your white blades, your chartreuse blades, your mixed colors, your shad baits, your bluegill baits. It's ridiculous. We've, we've been there. I went to these. These are these Busby Fast Flats, specifically this one, the half large. It's the short bag. There's so many spinner baits. I mean, there's pounds of spinner baits here and I'm able to downsize it into nothing. And I can grab my Swagey Strongs or my Chartreuse Blades or my mixed Chartreuse and White and just grab and go without everything piled up in there. Now, back to where we were. <laughs> the Swagey Strong, I'm all over the place. It's all right. Climb out right. of that hole. <laughs> the Swagey Strong, fantastic bait. <clears throat> But they just came out with the Swagey. Now, what's the difference? Swagey strong, Swagey. The Swagey is made out of lighter wire. Now, to the guy who's not a spinnerbait guy, he's like, give me the strong one, <laughs> right? I don't want to break off. When you start getting into spinnerbaits, it's all about vibration. And the lighter the wire, the more vibration. It's not just about the visual blade turning it's about the vibration coming off of that and when you go to a really light wire that vibration the whole thing is moving not just the blade it starts working that arm you start getting that secondary movement you start getting those unique blowouts and things that are different in the vibration and that is everything the shimano swagey again is a slim profile light wire and the reason why they call it swagey is it's got a swage which means this part of the frame is still heavy wire right in here it reduces wire size this end of the frame and you can see the difference as i'm pushing here it's solid out here it's super soft that allows all that vibration without constantly bending at the head like a traditional light wire spinnerbait would. And then again, very small blades. They're very slim blades as well. That allows you to go faster. Those big wide blades, those more of a slow roll. The more narrow those blades get, you can really speed them up because they don't pull back nearly as hard. So again, the Mega Bass SV3 and that Shimano Swagey are both killers in that finesse profile. The Swagey is a bigger hook. The Mega Bass is that really true finesse hook where I can drop down. I mean, here I'm like 12 to 14 pound line. Here I'm down 8, 10, 12. You can set it on really light tackle in situations where they don't want to eat a spinnerbait normally. 
that really compact package of the finesse swimmer, uh, spinner baits is key for me. A lot of times, especially in stained water, you'll feel you'll you'll get bit, but you'll feel them hit the blades. Yeah. When they when you, you get that compact uh, profile, they can eat that whole thing, and you don't have to worry about a big trailer, which is really really nice. All right, let's talk uh, trailer hooks. So a lot of guys, if you're throwing if you're throwing a trailer on your spinner bait, you don't necessarily need Yep. a trailer hook but if you're a guy that's throwing you know something like that a lot of times you'll want to to run a secondary hook off the back or a trailer hook so we got three different hooks for you if you're a guy that's throwing the big full-size spinner baits this guy right here this is the spinner bait trailer hook okay super strong you slide it over there's basically a rubber piece in here that you slide over the shank of your over the shank of the hook and then you hook the eye through it and it keeps that that hook level with the bait it's kind of like rigid right on the how do we even explain this completely uh, different concept a totally different concept uh aaron martin's best one of the best fishermen to ever do it right always thinking outside the box, always kind of tweaking things and thinking differently. Um, before he passed, he was working on this guy right here, the Gamakatsu uh, G Power Stinger Hook. And what the thought process is on this is changing the angle of the hook eye to get that trailer hook to run uh, level in the water. A lot of times, if you're not throwing a, 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 a good, a Let's just bait. call it what it is. There's a lot of junk on the market. A lot of spinner, spinner baits, baits will run through the water like this, right? And if you have a rigid trailer hook, it's down here. He was changing the angle. So if you're throwing a, a spinner bait that runs, it doesn't run perfectly horizontal where that hook is straight up, it's going to run back here. So changing that angle allows that trailer hook to be level and hook more fish. So that's a really cool uh, design to get that hook to kind of sit straight if your spinner bait isn't running truly straight in the water. Yep. Some things you can do to adjust those, you can take and bend. That'll change the way your, your spinner bait runs, changes the speed. You kind of bend it down, it'll go faster, bend it up, it's gonna slow it down. But more importantly, adding that trailer hook allows you to hook those fish that are short striking your bait. Now, last but not least, you know, like this guy right here, you don't have to run a trailer, it comes with these these little, whatever you want to call those, longer, Legs. longer yeah. appendages, <laughs> right? But you don't want them to miss it. So this guy right here, this is the Hayabusa 929. It's a really finesse trailer hook. So when you're throwing, you know, Matt talked about it, 8, 10, 12 pound test, yep. you don't need a super strong trailer hook. So the Hayabusa, sticky sharp, it's really smooth. It's got that coating on it. It allows you to run that trailer hook but still run that really uh, small finesse line. All right, let's switch over to the actual swim bait trailers. Um, and before we go there, we're linking all this stuff. If you're not familiar with this, all of our videos, but especially these buyer's guides, below the video, we link all of the different baits and gear in the order that we talk about it with a link straight to Tackle Warehouse. We also give you our favorite sizes, specific colors that we enjoy, all that to help you make a decision. Uh, if you're just, you know, you jump in there and you see this one, but it comes in 12 colors, it's hard to know which one. Your situation might be a little different than ours, but we're gonna give you our favorites. So you have a starting point. Also, depending on where you're seeing this, whether you're on tacticalbassin.com, YouTube, Facebook, somewhere else, wherever you're seeing it, if you get down below the video, if you scroll down, that's where you're going to find all of those links. You might have to click the three little dots, hit more to open it up, hit more again to see a full description, but it is there to help you guys. Now, swim baits, the purpose of a swim bait, because just like we've only got double willows, we only are talking about swim bait trailers. The reason why a swim bait, instead of say a straight tail or a little double tail, is because spinner baits do all run differently. There's a lot that goes into these decisions you'll never know about. We test basically everything that hits the market. A lot of spinner baits don't run flat, like Tim said. They want to run tipped. Typically, those baits get less bites. 
The flatter I can get a spinnerbait to run, the more successful I am with that spinnerbait. Well, when you go to twitch a spinnerbait, because we don't just straight retrieve these, like that bling, we're feathering it. We're walking that through cover. When we get to the edge of cover, we'll pop these spinnerbaits to get them to flare. Well, when you pop them, the blades resist, they pull back. What happens is even a flat spinnerbait, when you pump it, it won't dart forward and look good, it will <laughs> pump up. That's what happens because the blade is pulling back, there's resistance. The swim bait helps resolve that. That's why that's the trailer that we use. Those tails are kicking and they pull back so that it does stay flat and you get that really good flash and movement together. Now, as far as specific trailers go, the Kitec, the 4.3 specifically. We have found through the years that a 4.8, while it looks great on a full frame spinnerbait, the tail is too long and it will come around and catch the hook point when you're pumping. And it happens a lot. The 4.3, almost the same profile, resolves 90% of that. The other ones, the Largo Shad. You've got the three and a half and the three. Obviously that's just matching size of spinnerbait. The little three inch goes great on your finesse baits. The three and a half, on the bulk of the baits. The Largo Shad just has a fantastic vibration. It's the right amount of drawback and it's a completely different swim than a Kitec. A Kitec is that wide swim, murkier water. You're really trying to pull fish. Whereas the Largo Shad is that tight vibration that matches the blades and really is a great profile. So the clearer the water, the more we lean towards that Largo. All right, let's talk rods. Let's do it. All right, one of my favorite rods for throwing a spinnerbait is this guy right here. This is a Zodius six foot 10 medium heavy. So it's a shorter rod. I don't know which rod you got over there, but it's a little bit shorter. And again, I talked about it a little bit ago that you're making those little roll casts or those little pitches or flips to isolated pieces of cover. So having that shorter rod, but still having that medium heavy uh, power yeah. allows you to hook those fish and get them out. So this is my, my go-to combo. Uh, rod if I'm throwing these finesse swim baits paired up with a spinner 70 baits. swim bait oh, spinner baits spinner baits practically okay. the same thing same thing yeah um paired up with a 70 size uh reel this is the Corrado 70 MGL again on that smaller bait caster it's just a really uh comfortable rod to make those roll casts it's short it's precise and it has enough backbone to get those fish out of those laydowns or out of those little pieces of cover that you're throwing to Probably our main, like all around spinnerbait rod, if you will. One that will do it all. This is from Loomis. It's the 844C MBR. Now the nice thing is this is the IMX Pro. You can also get that in GLX. You can get it in NRX Plus. You can set your budget wherever you want. I personally struggle with an NRX Plus for a spinnerbait. It's, I can right. get the job done on an IMX Pro, no problem. But that 844C MBR is the perfect balance of a soft tip section with a stout butt section. That allows me to still be able to feather these baits around cover, twitch them nice and soft, work them. But when a good fish eats them, you can still smash that hook set it's a really good combination and that's hard to find now you can throw a spinnerbait on basically any medium to medium heavy rod you really can but these specific rods work in more situations i also pair it up to a corrado dc the dc that reel if you're not familiar with that is essentially it's a digital controlled reel there's a little computer chip in there that is it making adjustments faster than you can? A spinnerbait in the wind is a nightmare. There's no way around it. When you throw that thing and it's going full speed and then the wind catches the blades and the speed changes, you're prone to backlash. A DC reel really helps reduce that where you can just go fishing. You're not worried about whether it just gusted or not. You're just fishing. That's a fantastic combo. And then a great budget combo for you. Uh, Again, you can throw it on a medium, medium heavy rod, but it's still finding one where you've got that right balance 
of soft tip transitioning through the mid and then really stiff in the back section is important. St. Croix Mojo Bass 7.1 medium heavy. It's just a great all around in between size that you can throw a spinnerbait on along with a hundred other things, right? Got that one paired up to a Daiwa Fuego, which is a really good reel. It, you get really good distance out of that reel despite it being a budget friendly reel. Uh, really good consistent distance out of it, which is great when you're trying to throw these awkward profiles through the wind. Yeah, spinnerbaits in the wind, it's just like a sail, right? They just blow up and you don't want your reel to blow up. But guys, this is really a, uh, a small portion of spinnerbaits, right? It's such a huge category. We really tried to simplify it for you. We did add some specialty ones in there, but uh, your full size, your finesse size spinnerbaits, it's, it seems kind of like a lost technique unless you're a spinnerbait guy. Yep. Now, I'm guilty of it. I need to throw a spinnerbait more often, but there's some really cool additions to the your traditional spinnerbaits and uh, they, they catch fish. You don't necessarily have to throw an A-rig or you know a big underspin. The spinnerbait is the original bait to mimic those small schools of bait fish. So they're a lot of fun. They put a lot of fish in the boat, especially on cloudy, windy, uh days it they just they really really work so hopefully that that helps you get pointed in the right direction as far as uh, going down that spinnerbait rabbit hole we tried to at least i did i know you were kind of long-winded but uh, <laughs> uh tried to that really was my short I version know, yeah we tr really tried to pull the reins back a little bit and just uh, ease into it but it is such a huge category and there's so much to it besides you know blade size blade color blade shape it just lots of it's lots a monster of so but the moral of the story grab a full-size frame grab a finesse bait get a swim bait trailer and a trailer hook and just experiment with it you're set you really can just fish with that until you want to dive into the right. technique and then it turns into <laughs> a whole different animal hopefully you guys enjoyed the video as a reminder these videos these buyers guides are running seven days a week right now so we will see you again tomorrow morning if you enjoyed the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon